Hi, welcome to the show. My name is Bill Fairman. This is my sister and business partner, Wendy, Wendy Sweet. Sweet. I, I was wondering if she knew what her name was. <laughs> so it still is. <laughs> we would uh, love to get started with really a little bit of our background, who we are, you know, where we came from, <laughs> why we're in front of you spewing our knowledge. <laughs> So it's kind of a funny story. You know, I, I deal with a lot of dentists now you know, in business and so do you. I started off my career. I actually went to school to become a dental technician and I worked in that field for uh, around 10 years, uh, but it wasn't my personality. No, was, but you were good at it. You're so, an artist. Well, yeah. I mean, I love the artistry. I love the engineering that was involved, but my personality sitting behind a bench all day grinding, I just, it wasn't for me. Plus the pay sucked. <laughs> it didn't help. <laughs> yeah. So my father-in-law actually said to me one day, you know, you'd be great in the mortgage business. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, why is that? And he said, because you have a personality. <laughs> <laughs> I said, really? That's all it takes. Yeah. Plus you have that Dick Clark. Look he said, <laughs> thank you. Um, you get extra pay in your, yeah. Check this week for that. <laughs> so anyway, I said, so that's all it takes is a personality. He said, that's about 75% of it because you have to go out and get your own leads. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it turned out that I, I, I really did have an aptitude for the numbers and being able to take the numbers and translate them uh, to people that didn't have that knowledge. And it's a good thing. Cause it wasn't like that in high school, right? <laughs> <laughs> it, well, that's true. <laughs> Well, that's a story for another yeah. time. And anyway, <laughs> I have spent 30 years plus in the mortgage business. I started off as a loan officer in a shop that uh, essentially we just did loans for people buying houses mm -hmm. or refinancing houses. Conventional. And eventually I got into the commercial space where we did what was called small balance commercial mortgages. Mm -hmm. So that would be anything from a doctor's office to a multifamily property or self storage, even mobile home parks. And that was fascinating too, because it's completely different from the residential side. Residential side, you qualify someone based on their credit and their ability to repay the loan, right? We want our money back. On the, well, we always want it back. <laughs> on the commercial side, you're qualifying really the property more than you are the individual and the property itself has to be able to make its own payment. And, right. And then how do you do that? Well, they're assuming you're going to, if you're not owner occupying it, like a dentist would, right. You're going to essentially rent it to somebody else who is going to make sure that those payments are enough to cover all the expenses. And at the same time, have a profit. They don't right. want you just to break even. You have to make a profit too. <laughs> That's a good clue. That reminds me of our friend Quincy, who he's an investor and, he never wants to do a deal with somebody that's not making enough money because right. he's not going to be around very long if they're not making any money. So Makes sense. if they're giving most of their profit away and you as the investor are getting most of the profit, and he says, I don't want to do business with that person because <laughs> there won't be a second deal. That's right. They'll go broke and quick. He wants long-term relationships. That's right. Smart way so to think. So during the crash, uh, the mortgage crash, I was not an investor. I was a worker bee in the mortgage industry mm. and I found myself because I was in the commercial side. It took a little longer for the commercial side to kind of crash completely like the, you know, the residential side did. I found myself at one point making about 25% of what I had been making for the last 10 years. And at the same time I was in an industry that had shrunken to about 25% of what it was. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. uh, I ended up going out and getting my commercial truck driver's license. And I did that oh, for oh. A, a, a couple of years <laughs> just to make sure I made the mortgage payments. But you know, God, you gotta do. God knows what uh, the plan is. And yes, he does. his plan for me was to learn the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's our plan and, all the time. <laughs> In the South, we like to say that uh, adversity builds character. And we got that. We also like to say, because <laughs> I'm ate up with character now. Yeah. <laughs> so now this is the point where my lovely sister here was in the mortgage business while I was driving a truck and she talked me into going into business. Bagged him. I had to bag him. 
several times. That's another story. But uh, <laughs> that's why we formed Carolina Hard Money, mm -hmm. and we were making hard money loans. And then we went on to Carolina Capital Management, where we now uh, manage a fund. We still do the same type of hard money and commercial hard money loans. We just do it in a larger pool now. That's right. Well, what about you? That's Where'd right. you come from? <laughs> the same mother you did. I really have been in a couple of different careers. My first career was in the hotel business, which I absolutely loved. And from that, I got into the golf resort business, which was even I better. I love that even more because yeah. I used to go on our golf trips. <laughs> yeah, that, there was a premium to that. It was great. And I ended up uh, having a baby at the age of 40, decided I didn't want to work. I wanted to stay home and take care of my child. And that lasted about oh, 20 minutes. No, it was three <laughs> months at least before I got crazy and went to work for you actually in the mortgage business. Then I went crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so from working with you, that really got me started in the mortgage business. I was in two. In fact, my first day was, 9-11. That's right. That 9-11 was the first, first day, first appointment we went on together. So that date, you know, will last for a good long time in our brains. But from that point, I actually met Larry Goins within a few months of that. He and I became business partners, ran his mortgage company while he started putting together his product for teaching investors. And really the business that you and I had where I was working for you, the best product we had was for investors. And so I knew how to do the tougher loans. No, no mortgage brokers ever wanted to do investor loans. It took too much time. You had to, you, you had to understand how the underwriters would think it would, it, it, there was just a lot of red tape and that's how I learned mortgages. So for Tax me, it returns. was easy. Yeah. When you're dealing with investors too, they have a what's called a schedule of real estate owned. Mm -hmm. So if they owned a lot of properties, you had to figure in every single piece of property. Most loan officers are like, they didn't want to do yeah, that. That's too much work. That's for me. I'm exactly moving on to the next right. one. Cause that's, the pay is still the same. That's exactly <laughs> right. But volume speaks volumes, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And we were able to just, I mean, grow a wonderful investor only business. And, and it was because of being in that business doing, mortgages for investors that w I really fell into the hard money side. I had investors that would easily qualify for a loan. They had plenty of money in the bank, but they couldn't find houses. And then I had other investors that couldn't qualify to save their life for a loan, but they could find houses. So I just started putting them together and, and basically brokering their monies between each other like that. And, and that's really how I got into the hard money business. By, by the way, our next broadcast am i gonna have to sit on a phone book i swear i feel so much shorter than you stand up tall sorry uh, <laughs> rabbit hole go ahead so from that from that was in 2003 i guess when we really started doing some hard money the crash hit in 2008 we shut the mortgage company down and i went to seminary for a good three and a half years i graduated from seminary loved it had no intention of getting back into the the industry and I never really left it. I was still doing some hard money on the side, but I just, God had a better plan for me and a different plan for me and, and just set it up so that that business just took off the hard money business did. And, and that's when I started begging you, please, I need help. I had to show him my bank statements. Look, I'm making money. You can <laughs> come work with me. And you know, I finally I dragged you into it. Uh, God called you to go to seminary. God called me to go to truck stops. <laughs> it's funny how things work. It is funny. It is funny. And actually it's been awesome because, you know, now we've got this incredible, wonderful business with an incredible team that we work with. And, and we have the ability to treat this company like a ministry. And it really is because it's God's company. It's not ours. And we just have to continue to keep each other focused on whose it really belongs to, which is not either one of us, right? Yeah, absolutely. And we just stay on track with that. So well, well it's funny. While I'm in the back, living in the back of this truck, you know, weekly. It was I'm, cool though. I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> stewing <was> cool. over <laughs> I, I was stewing over the fact that if I had been an investor at the time, I would have had passive income. Uh, and I would have overcome that. I wouldn't have had to been a truck driver for uh, several years. Right. Um, and so, but you're that, ate up with character. That's, 
that's that's what that's the passion that I have, and that's what drives me now to teach other people yeah. how to have passive income. Because if you have passive income, it doesn't matter what happens around you, you're still going to have that passive income coming in, and you can do the things you want to do with the people you want to do them with mm -hmm. at the time you want to do them, right? Absolutely. And at the same time, Wendy's calling was teaching people, and I love teaching people as well, but. Wendy, and it's funny, I always give her grief about this. She majored in nonprofits and she fails every day because we make a profit. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> but she, she, she ha has that giving side to her and, and she's constantly teaching and helping other people really have what we have. Yeah. Well, it's, it's so, there's, there's nothing more fulfilling to see investors just build build their world in real estate around them. There's no glass ceiling to being an investor, whether you're a lender or whether you're the builder or the rehabber, the person that's wholesaling. There's no glass ceiling as to what you right. can do. You can be a man, a woman, black, white, red, yellow, whatever color. It doesn't matter. You that's are in control over your... Your own um, destiny. destiny. Yeah. That's right. For further information, <laughs> go to carolinahardmoney.com. And we have a lot of different tabs on there. Some of it's for education and resources and all other kinds of ways to find out other things about us and some of the stuff that we And have. not just about us, about people that we're connected with, too. We've got lots of links on there. We're Absolutely. We can hook you up with other folks that we know, like, and trust. So thank you so much for joining us. If you really like what you heard, you want to see some more, switch over here or <laughs> here or perhaps there. There's more episodes, but they're somewhere. Yeah. I think Click they're, it on. They're By the way, subscribe and like us as well. Please.